Hi guys and welcome to my fourth video. My name's Adrena and I am an Australian teacher, a Teachers Pay teacher seller and a mum. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create digital paper for Teachers Pay teachers. So first of all you might be asking yourself what's Teachers Pay teachers? Well Teachers Pay teachers, also known as CPT, is, is an online marketplace for teachers and educators to be able to sell their original resources. So things like lesson plans, worksheets, PowerPoint, fonts, but my most favorite of all, ClipArt. Now ClipArt is slightly different to digital paper but it still has the sort of the same elements involved so if you're wondering what's digital paper well digital paper is basically if you think of a background it's basically just like a background a digital background a digital background that you can use and these digital backgrounds might have patterns on it it might have pictures on it it could have a scene on it it's all different types of digital paper that you can actually create so in today's video I'm gonna be showing you how I make digital paper there are different ways that you can make digital paper. This is just the way that I do it. And usually when you're dealing with digital paper, they come in the form of a PNG or a JPEG. So I'm gonna be showing you how I make that in Procreate on the iPad. So feel free to follow along with me. Otherwise, if you are just curious of how to make digital paper, then keep on watching. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna start by opening up Procreate. And as you can see, you're brought to your menu with all the things that you've been sort of working on. So I have got other little digital paper sets I've been working on. This set here, I'll just quickly show you before we get into this, is a Halloween set that I've been working on. Um, and I actually have this on my Teachers Pay Teachers store, but this is basically what digital papers can look like. Uh, so this is just one set and this is Halloween inspired, but we're not talking about that today. So I'm just going to show you how I create some digital paper. So if I just go to the plus sign up here in the top right hand corner and we go to paper, so it says paper sRGB 11 times 8.5, that's the one that you want. So I just click that and there are other people out there that choose to do different sizes uh, for their digital paper but this is the size that I like to stick to because basically for me it's easier to input into like into programs like PowerPoint and it's easier kind of to stretch and fit into uh, into programs so I just personally like this one I've seen some people have it more of a square for their digital backgrounds but in my case I just create it like this so I've been thinking about what I'm going to make and I'm thinking I'm going to do another like boho, boho inspired digital paper because I'm finding boho is kind of very in at the moment. So basically what I do, I'll just give you a quick brief rundown. So if you're new to Procreate, let me just quickly give you a brief rundown. So the circle here is your color palette. You'll find all different colors here. You can actually change the way that you get your color palette uh, to be... You can change the way that you use your color palette so you've got your disc down here you've got your classic selection harmony value palettes I personally usually use my palettes and the disc option now the palettes here you might see oh there's lots of different colors this won't these won't come in yours these are palettes that I've either created myself or I've actually bought so I've created this as my Halloween palette and I've made this pastel palette and there's a few other palettes through here. I've got quite a few that I've actually downloaded or I've purchased. So that's that about palettes. But you might find it easier to just use the disc selection tool when you're creating your own digital paper. So that's that for the colors. That's where we'll access that. In the little squares next to it, you'll see that these are your layers. So basically, just think of layers. Um, so layer one being on the bottom and layer two will be on top and the more layers that you add the more it's just it's going to be that element's going to be on top of the other layer so we don't need those for now we can just stick to the layer one this is going to be your eraser so if you need if you make mistakes you can rub things out this is your smudge tool which you might not need at this point this is a tool that I feel like I don't use that much, but only on occasions that I will, but not really for digital paper. And this is important. This is your paintbrush. So this is all the brushes that you're going to be able to use and you can get creative with. So I'll just say the brushes that I like to use 
usually in the calligraphy section, which they will come standard on your Procreate app. So these aren't brushes that I've purchased or anything. These are just all standard to the app. So my ones that I really like are K Kinyani, Monoline and Brush Pen. They're the three that I keep on going back to because I like their look. And also I would say too, Blotchy is a really good one too, sorry. I do like Blotchy and I use that with quite of a lot of my digital artworks to add a bit more texture to it but today I think we might stick to we might stick to the brush pen now we are going to be creating something super simple so basically I'm just going to add a layer here and I'm going to choose my base layer so click on click on the layer one here and you can rename these as well if you find it easier so if you just rename that just for now you don't have to sometimes I don't do this but I will just do it for the purpose so you can kind of see so let's just say background background so that's the background now I know that you have another layer underneath background color basically this layer doesn't ever go away and you have to kind of click it off if you want it off so the background color here I'm going to choose, go into my palettes, let's have a look. I want to kind of stick with the whole boho vibe. So I'm going to choose, let's just start with a nice kind of beige kind of color. Okay, let's start with that. So that's going to be the background color. So that's going to be the background color. Now I'm going to choose my brush. So it's on brush pen and I'm going to choose a brown that I like so let's just say hmm what brown do I like and now I'm just gonna start drawing some spots oh that's a bit big so I'm gonna change that let's make it like 17 or 16 let's just start by drawing some spots Okay, now I just need to make sure, oh see, I've made a boo-boo already and I'm kind of glad I did this because I'm lucky I checked because this is not what you want to do. <laughs> so you want to basically delete all that because we don't want to have those spots on the same layer as the background. So in this case, so I've got background, I'm going to do, I'll rename this and I'll rewrite that as spots. So these are the spots got my background now I'm gonna make my spots on here so make sure you don't make that mistake because you can go so far into an artwork and then you realize oh no I've done it on the background you just don't want to do that because it's a pain in the butt so now let's try creating these spots again oh. it doesn't have to be anything fancy honestly like let's create what comes organically to you and what you feel like in this case this is just kind of be like kind of random but boho is kind of like in at the moment so boho is just kind of like that unconventional style type of thing and don't worry we are going to fill these in this is where your creative eye is going to come in and like what i'm doing literally is not I'm not Picasso guys, <laughs> I'm just saying like this is pretty simple, anyone can do this really. So I'm just making those kind of irregular shapes, might make a couple smaller ones. I'm going to fill these in. Now instead of doing it like this, instead of going colouring them all in separately, what I'm going to do is I'm going to color drop them. So all I need to do to color drop it is make sure I'm on that same layer of spots and I'm just going to fill them in. Now I will just say, be very mindful of this. I've gone back because as you can see, well hopefully you can see this, but if I just color drop this, I'll just do exactly what I did. You'll see there's like some white edging here and that's what you don't really want because then you have to go over that so what I'm going to do I'm just going to backspace that is we're going to actually so you just want to keep hold of that so I've color dropped it here but I want to make sure I just slide it so the threshold so if you oh my goodness what is happening here let's try that again okay so you can see as I go 
left and right it kind of changes the amount of what it feels so you want to make sure that it doesn't show that white edge that I had there before so I'm going to go and do that with all of these so that's what I'm looking like so far and I might add a little bit of something else to this so what I might do oh first of all I'm just gonna fix this because I don't want that little dot there okay so now we've got that I'm going to now actually create a layer underneath the spots and I'm going to choose a white color and I'm just going to go and outline the spots that I've made so I'm going to zoom in so I want to just outline these spots that I've made Again, this is super easy, you guys. Like, you can definitely do this. Like I said, you don't have to be a Picasso. And I know some people might be thinking, what the heck? Like, like surely someone doesn't actually use that. <laughs> You'd be surprised what people like. And when it comes to boho, this is one thing I love about boho. It's like unconventional. Like, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be like super intricate or detailed and sometimes simple is good sometimes the simpler it is the better in some cases and this is just a little background that someone can use to just make their product stand out that little bit more if they want if they like this color, kind of like boho color tone so if I can do this you guys then you surely can you might have some really cool ideas at what digital paper that you might like to make. What I do like about digital paper is it doesn't take that long compared to some other tasks or clip art or it takes a little less time to create digital paper what I found and it can be kind of therapeutic as well. <laughs> so okay so that's what this one's looking like so far. So as you can see the layers we've got the under we've got the spots on the top um, we've got, we like, might just rename that white spots. Oh, we don't need that. Rename white spots. Again, you don't have to name it. I'm just doing this for the purpose of the video. A lot of the times I don't actually name my things when I'm actually working because I sort of know what layers, what things are on which layer and you get to know that as you use it, as you use this program. But yeah, basically, I'm just going to go in and have a little look, make sure that they're all kind of filled in. Just double check all of those, because sometimes we have a little bit of um, filling in that needs to be done. I'll just double check all of those, make sure I'm happy with that. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, with boho especially. Sometimes I like it a little bit like it looks sort of hand drawn. So that's that. Now to recreate this but in different colors, that's now what I'm going to do. So this is going to be my digital paper. Yes guys, it's super simple. It's nothing fancy, but it is something when you layer words and things on top, it makes your work stand out a little bit more. Okay guys, so the beauty of digital paper is it can be really easy to switch and change the colors and the paper backgrounds in an art piece that you're going to use for digital paper. So I'm going to show you this one way. You can do it differently where you duplicate the file so you don't mess it up, but I'm going to show you the basically the way that I do usually do it. So if you go watch my second video on the boho flowers and how I duplicated each of the flowers, that's one way to do it, but this is another way that I usually I usually work with digital paper if I'm just changing the background colors and keeping the other elements the same. So in this case, the elements here are like the brown spot and the white spot. So I will keep them all the same, but I just want to change the actual background color to make it look a little bit different and to give variation into this digital paper pack. And also it makes my life a little easier because then I've got one set and they're all similar, but just provide a different color options so the yeah so the buyer can choose which color they want to use so to do this super simple super easy um so i've got the background color all i need to do is add another layer 
and so basically on the side here you've got the boxes if the boxes is checked it basically means it's visible so you can see it so these little ticks here that means yep I can see it if you take off or click off that little box it means you can't see it and that's now turned up invisible so you won't be able to see it. if I click it back on it's visible turn it back off it's invisible so if I wanted to turn the spots off I could turn the spots off okay so basically what I want to do now so I've got this beige color I want to choose a different color for the background but I want to keep these two the spots and the white spots the same so I just click on another layer so we'll go into layer 4 we'll turn off the background from the last layer and I'm going to go choose another color that I sort of like that I think might go well with these brown spots so let's go let's go something like this so you can kind of see the difference now but I I don't know if that's a bit too close to the colour. No, I will keep that. Okay, so anyway, you have to just play around with what colours that you would like to go with these. But after you do that, you just add another layer and just continue on doing that. So I'll take off the layer I just did. I'm going to choose another colour. Let's try maybe like a yellowy. Oh. So yeah, I like that. So we kind of keep that. Add another layer, so we've got one, two, three layers now. This is our fourth layer here. You can rename them, like I said, if you want to, but if you don't, uh, there's no big deal. You just have to remember what layer is what. Might choose this color, make sure I'm on that. Yep, I'm on that layer, so that's fine. I'm gonna add another layer, so I've got one, two, three, four. I'm gonna choose different colors until I get to 12 because in my digital paper packs, I usually have 12, so I'm gonna choose 12 different colors that I've hand picked to go into this set. This process could be sped up a lot easier if you have already picked out your colours, but I've not picked out my colours, so I'm just choosing the ones on the go. And sometimes that's just how I do it. it just kind of depends on what I feel like and what kind of vibe I'm I've, I'm feeling at the time. <laughs> so, but I do like to add a little bit of variation. And basically, when you're working with boho, it's a lot of neutrals and it's a lot of browns and like earthy tones. And I really, I didn't think I was gonna like it as much but I do actually like this these color palettes like the boho color palettes that's a bit too similar I'm just looking out it's a bit too similar than the last one so I might add change this one but yeah I'm actually so surprised at how much I like the boho color scheme palette so I've got one two three four five six okay add another layer we want 12 remember again you can choose however many that you want for your packs this is just what I do for mine. Hopefully it's helpful. Hope, hope this kind of gives you a, a starting point as to kind of maybe what you might like to do for yours. And you can obviously get as detailed or as intricate as you want with all these digital papers. So if you're wondering my process of how do I choose the colours, <laughs> like I said, there's no magic secret. It's just what I visually find appealing then I'm gonna have a go and choose that basically um, I don't know if that one's a bit too out of the ordinary um, one thing I will say is if you do like it but you're not sure if it goes in your color palette scheme this is something that I do for my buyers in some digital paper sets sometimes I add a bonus one so I'll advertise them as there's 12 in there but I'll actually add a little bonus one so in this case I'm actually going to add this blue one as a bonus because I like it but I don't know if it goes with the rest of this palette it sort of does but sort of doesn't so I'm just going to add this as a bonus so I'm just going to even write bonus you don't have to write the bonus um, oop, turn reference off you don't have to write bonus and you don't have to include any bonuses but I like to include some bonus ones sometimes for my buyers so they get a little surprise when they open up like oh I didn't know they had this one and they might be like oh that's kind of cool so yeah I think I'm going to add more of a darker brown oh so I have to make sure that that's turned off so I can see now I'm not I don't like that brown it's a bit too reddish so I want to change that so that's a little nicer yeah okay so I'm pretty happy with all of that so we've got the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They're my 12 base digital papers. And then we've got this one as the bonus, this blue one. And yeah, now it's basically time to export them onto the computer. So this is how easy the process is, guys. Okay, so pretty much 
I've now created my digital paper and I've got them through the layers all in different colors. Now this part of things is a little bit more time consuming because you're just having to export them onto your computer one by one because you've done, you've done it this way. And like I said, there's another way I could show you, but this is the way I usually do it uh, so I can see all the colors sort of next to each other. But yeah, there's so many different ways you can do things on Procreate, but I'll just show you now. I'm going to hook up to my computer and I'm going to show you how I go from getting them from Procreate now to my computer. Okay, so I've got my computer here and I've got my iPad with the digital paper that I want to get from here to my computer. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder. So I actually save it on my passport, which is like a hard drive. I'm just going to save it into my folder that I have all my digital papers in. Okay, so I'm going to create a folder for this and I'm going to name it, I'm going to name it Boho Spots for now. <laughs> I might give it a better title later, I don't know. Um, I'm just going to name it Boho Spots and so now what I'm going to do, so basically for me to get this paper onto my computer, I have to make sure for starters I'm going to select the one I'm going to use first. So just turn that off. I'm going to start with this one here. Oh, turn that off. So I'm going to start with the bottom layer. So the background, the first layer that we started. So you can see that's the first one. So what I want to do is I want to go to this wrench up here. I'm going to press share and I'm going to actually, now this is different between clip art. This is just something I've worked out recently. I used to do PNGs a lot. You can airdrop them as a PNG, but what I have found or what I have learned recently is you can with digital paper because they're not being used in the way that clip art is they're going to be in the background jpegs probably a better way to export them because it's a smaller file so i'm just gonna i'm gonna export them as a jpeg and it'll say exporting then i want to airdrop it and i'm going to just choose a device in my case here my mac and you'll see it come up in your downloads from your downloads you basically want to drag them over and then usually I just delete that I put that in the bin um, once I've done that because I don't want two copies on my computer so I'll just go and do that for the rest of them so this is where I mean it does take a little while to export them because you have to do them one by one whereas if I had duplicated this file then I could select them all and just send them over but because I've done it this way it can be a little bit of a longer way when you exporting it over. So I'm going to take off that one and I'm going to do, I'm going to do the next layer up to this pink colour. So same thing, I'm going to go to the wrench, I think it's a wrench, spanner, whatever it is, <laughs> that tool, and I'm going to click JPEG and I'm going to click AirDrop, choose my Mac, and bring it over. And one thing I will say is I do actually like to rename them as soon as they go over. So I'm going to rename this one as one and you can rename them again afterwards but I'm going to have this one as two and I'm going to just go ahead and do that for the rest. I'll show you one more time and then I'll speed up the process. So just make sure that that layer is turned off. So turn that layer off and you want to select the next layer. So show in the background and go to that tool, share, JPEG, airdrop, to your Mac or to whatever device that you're sending it to. You want to bring it over, drag it over and then you want to rename it. So usually I like to use numbers to begin with and then I'll rename them before I package my whole file up. I'll go ahead and I'll do that again. Okay, so I'll just show you here. Um, so I'm just gonna have to rename this one. So I'll name that as 12, and then I'm going to rename that as a bonus, so 13, and I'll do that as a bonus. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to hold this camera. Um, so do that as a bonus. So, and you want to make sure. So they're in your downloads. You want to delete all of those. You want to just move to bin. 
Okay. So now I can have a good look at these. So my boho spots one. I can have a look. Let me just make these a bit bigger so you can see. So in this file you'll have all of those papers. You can kind of see them in the big screen. And so if I just press on my arrow keys, I can sort of just see that they're exact same, but just different tones and shades of the same digital paper. So yeah, as you can see, that is those 12 digital papers with one extra bonus. And I am going to show you how you can actually make, like, I'm going to show you what you can do with them as well to make them sort of look cool in your products I guess. Yeah that's basically how I get them onto the computer. If you want to see how I actually put them up for sale on TPT then you can go and watch my second video and it shows you with the boho flowers how I've done that. It's the same process and yeah but if you do want to know more or want me to do a second video then I can but just for now that's your digital paper and again these are just super simple they're nothing fancy um, but people can use these uh, in their backgrounds as like a design element or to add on or to make some decor um, or whatever. So that's that. I hope you like this simple basic tutorial sort of showing you how I did this. And just gives you an idea of how you can actually put your own digital paper out there. So yeah, good luck with it all guys. Digital paper is super easy to make and it's something that's actually super fun as well. And yeah, I hope that you have success making your own. Let me know if you did create any of your own digital paper for TPG. Thanks guys. Hey guys, I also just wanted to quickly show you if you were somebody that um, is wanting to know how you would input digital paper into say a PowerPoint product or PowerPoint program and I'm just going to quickly show you here. So I've just opened a brand new uh, PowerPoint document. So if I go to file, I want to go to page setup and I'm going to go not widescreen, but I'm going to go to letter paper. So 8.5 times 11, which is pretty much the same as what we created our digital paper in. Press OK and you'll find that it goes smaller. So that's the size of an A4 piece of paper basically. And so what I want to do now is I want to go to design. So we've got design and I'm going to just look over to the right hand corner. It might be slightly different depending on what version of PowerPoint you have, but I want to go format background on the, in the right hand corner. And then I'm going to go picture texture fill. And so we'll come up with this as a standard one, but I'm basically going to go into insert. I'm going to choose my digital paper that I just made just on my iPad just then. Okay, and then if I just find the one that I want, let's use this one for example. Just click insert and voila, that is inserted in here. And then what you can do is you can insert, add some cool shapes. So let's just make this white and take away the back, uh, the outline. So that's that and let's add some text. So let's write classroom or oh, welcome okay guys i'm sorry if the quality is a little bit different my camera sd card ran out of space but i just wanted to show you basically um so you can add text so let's just write welcome welcome to class let's write welcome to make it bigger Ah, look at that. And you could even, if you wanted to, add a little bit more extraness, you could make that black. And yeah, you could make that small, smaller. And yeah, so that's just basically one way that you can kind of use digital paper to spruce up a PowerPoint or a background or whatever. This could also be turned into a poster if you wanted to. So yeah, digital paper just gives it that little extra element and you can play around with it on PowerPoint or whatever program that you like. 
So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed that. So that's how I create digital paper. And I hope that this video is a little bit helpful to you just to see the process of how I go from creating digital paper. And digital paper is really fun because it can, it can be something that can be quite simple and easy to make. So anyway, thank you so much again for watching. If you have any more suggestions of what videos you'd like to see from me or any questions, feel free to please comment down below. And I will just say in my Teachers Pay Teachers store, Talazo Clip Art, I've been quite surprised that digital paper has been one of my biggest sellers. I never thought it, it would have been, but yeah so if you're wondering whether you can earn some money you selling digital papers then you can but yeah if you'd like to know a bit more about that just let me know and i will try my best to answer those questions again thanks for watching i know how valuable your time is and i really appreciate that now becoming a mom time is really really valuable to me so thank you so much and i would love if you would join me and subscribe on this channel so I hope this video maybe has inspired you to maybe pick up your Procreate pencil and your iPad and actually have a go at starting to create your own digital paper because yeah, it's fun and it is something that if you can earn money from, then why not? And thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Adios.